model is the use of extremely high pressure sales tactics being used to sell the least desirable thing on the planet. So let me show you now in this video the right way to do it and why you should really never be concerned about not being a guru and really why you might not ever want to become a guru in the first place. Check it out. So the guru model is probably the least effective method for selling ever because it has these five steps. Step number one is where the marketing message is basically, look at me, right? There's nothing to do with you, the client, it's all about the guru. Look at me is what all of that marketing is. Here's how I managed to do all kinds of really cool things, which is essentially step number two, which is look at how cool I am, right? So whenever you're seeing one of those classic internet marketing launches, it always is about look at me, look how cool I am and look at all my great accomplishments and all of that, which are usually true, we can only hope, right? And then you get to step three, which is look how cool everybody else says I am, right? And then, you know, you've got all the joint venture partners and affiliate partners saying, yeah, this guy's a genius, he's the greatest person in the world, he could bend spoons with his mind or whatever, solve world hunger with the drop of a hat, snap of a fingers, you know, he could levitate whole nine yards. And then, of course, the sales process begins, which is basically really, really dependent on scarcity and pressure, right? You've seen it a million times. Hey, you better buy this. It's going away in 10 minutes. We only have one copy of this downloadable course left, you know, because the server could blow up or, or whatever it may be. And then, of course, the promotion's over. And then what happens next is step five in the guru model, which is the downsell which is where basically the marketing message presented to you and presented to the prospect is, hey, you remember this whole step four why I said there was a scarcity and pressure? Well, now I'm gonna completely negate everything I said and tell you now that, hey, you can still get this thing I was just trying to sell you with all this pressure, but I'm gonna sell it to you for less and in a different pricing environment, et cetera. And that's essentially the guru method. Now imagine yourself, right? So if you're wanting to get a consulting client and obviously a consulting type of business relationship is just that, it's a business relationship. You speak with your clients regularly, you help them personally get stuff done, right? Well imagine if you were like meeting with your client, like you went to their house, for example, and did all of this in front of them one-on-one. -on -one. You walked into the guy's house and you're like, hey Bob, look at me, look how cool I am, look at all my cool stuff, look at all my accomplishments, look at everything I've done, look at how all these other people think I'm cool. Now Bob, listen, you need to sign this paper right now, you need to go ahead and become my client right now immediately. If you don't become my client in the next 48 hours, the world's gonna explode, the terrorists are gonna win, right? And the guy still doesn't sign, so then you show up the next day. Hey, Bob, uh, look, man, remember uh, when I was telling you you have to become a client now or else the world's going to end? Well, it turns out the world didn't actually end, and now you can become my client for less money. So if you did that and you followed that whole guru model that we've, led to, we've been led to believe is the only way to do things, what do you think your prospect would say to you? He'd say, get the hell out of here. You're an obnoxious buffoon. I never want to hear from you again, right? So it makes sense that you would think that you're supposed to be like this big famous person or whatever in order to build a consulting practice, but the reality is this method of selling is inefficient and typically very offensive, either on a subconscious or conscious level to your prospects. So I want to present to you a different way to do it, which is client-focused, right? And in a client-focused selling environment, there are two phases. Number one is we get the attention, and number two, get the attention, aka generate a lead. Number two is we help that person collaboratively and turn them into a customer. So that first phase where we get attention is basically we begin with compelling marketing. So if you remember on the webinar, I was talking about the difference between compelling and convincing. In the compelling marketing situation, you wanna figure out what your client's biggest question is right now, and then just answer that question. I learned this from Dean Jackson, like I probably told you on the webinar. Now, Dean likes to do it in a way where there is zero evidence of commercial intent. So the old way of lead generation would be, okay, free report, like remember we talked about the realtor example. So in the real estate example, the old way might be free report reveals the top seven things you have to ask any listing agent before you list your house with them. Now that's worked for years, right? It also screams direct response sales pitch, right? Which is fine. However, it repels lots of people. It's not casting a very wide net. So in the compelling example that we talk about, we figured out, okay, 
this guy owns oceanfront property, let's say in La Jolla, right? And he is thinking about selling his house. What is the number one question that's probably on his mind? And that question is, how much can I get for my house, right? So if you want to go out to the marketplace and do a customer-centric, client-focused model for attracting clients, what you would put out is a piece of information, I call it a lead magnet or a money magnet, that simply answers that question, such as first quarter La Jolla oceanfront home sales report, discover what oceanfront homes in La Jolla sold for in the first quarter of 2013. Now see, doesn't that make more sense? If a guy is living in an oceanfront home in La Jolla, wanting to sell his house, and the first thing on his mind is, I wonder how much I can get for my house, logically, he's gonna to respond to that. He's gonna say, yes, I would love that sales report to see what my neighbor's home sold for and what everyone else's houses are selling for. So that's the first way we capture interest, right, in this model. Now, if you compare it to this guy's, it has nothing to do with us, right? We're not saying, look at me, because that's stupid. They don't care about us, right? They care about them. All this dude wants to know is how much can I sell my house for? He doesn't want to know about how great of a realtor we might be or whatever. I'll give you another example just to bring it into the internet marketing world, right? Let's say that you're wanting to do some consulting and help brick and mortar businesses automate their sales funnel, right? And so your perfect client, might be a dentist who knows that automation is intelligent, but wants to know how to do it right. Now, what's the first thing that guy might be asking? Probably, what tools should I use, right? So we can say, okay, here are the, here are the tools you should use. That's one way to do it. Or we could publish a research report. And our research report might be entitled something like research report, or, or even more specifically, dental automation research report seven most popular automation tools, dot, 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 and three tools to avoid. Now, don't you think that person who is a dentist, who is interested in automating his practice, would respond to that? Because that's the first question on his mind. Well, what, what should I use? There's so many options. I'm a dentist. What's special to me, right? Nowhere are you talking about yourself there. You're just talking about that particular thing. So this is step one in the client-focused model, right? You see how easy that is? You don't have to puff yourself up. You don't have to talk about how great you are. They don't care about how great we are anyway. They only care about themselves. Now, number two, like I discussed on the webinar, is to use the irresistible intrigue process to simply ask them, would you like some help? Now, here's the deal. Like we talked about in that model, most of them are not going to raise their hand and say, yes, please help me immediately. And that's okay. That's where we follow up, right? But a percentage of them will say, as a matter of fact, I do need some help. And all we really care about ultimately is a small group of customers, right? So my practice, as I sort of pare back, you know, I told you on the webinar, I've raised my rates a couple months ago to $9,750 a month. So ultimately, I'll end up working with just 18 clients to meet the income goals that I want from my consulting practice, right? This is 18 people out of hundreds of thousands of potential prospects online. You probably have the same. Remember when we did that goal setting exercise and you determined what you needed to make per month? Well, you probably have a predetermined number of clients you want. So unlike this guru method where you try to sell to every single living person in the world by telling them whatever you think that they wanna hear, right? In the consulting model, we don't care about that at all. We just want a tiny little group of clients that we get along with and mesh with perfectly and get results for. So some of your respondents who respond to this first step right here are going to raise their hand and say, as a matter of fact, I would like some help immediately. Some of them won't. And when they say no, they're not saying, I never want some help. They're saying, not yet. I just want to know what the best automation tools are, or I just want to know what the houses are selling for in my area. You see, if they say not yet, and they indicate not yet by simply not responding, to the, the uh, irresistible intrigue phase, if they say not yet, in the customer-centric model, all you do is give them some results in advance over time and continue to offer them help whenever they're ready. We don't have to be obnoxious about it. You don't have to pressure them, talk about how great you are. It's all about them. 